How's it going everyone? Darren here aka Dr. Dev and welcome to today's C Sharp Tips to Improve video where I'm going to help you guys improve your C Sharp skills by teaching you how to write cleaner, more efficient and standardized code. In today's video I'm going to teach you about a fantastic feature which came out in C Sharp 6 known as the Null Conditional Operators. So to get started I will go ahead and open up Visual Studio and you may notice here on the right in the Solution Explorer that I've gone ahead and created a new project for the purpose of the video um, and it's actually using the C Sharp naming conventions. I will leave a link in the description uh, to actually allow you to read about the C Sharp naming conventions if you want but because it's not necessary for this video I will go ahead and shrink that. So within the program.ces class, you may also notice that I've gone ahead and I've set up some simple code just to help us get started. So what I've got here is a class called lunch. And according to the implementation, every lunch has a sandwich. And every sandwich has some bread. And every bread has a bread type, which down here you'll see can be either baguette, biscuit, or bun. So to prepare for work in the morning, I want to go ahead and I want to make myself a nice little lunch. So let's do that. Lunch, lunch equals new lunch. There, I've created myself a lunch. And let's say I want to go ahead and get some confirmation of the bread type that I'm using. So I'll do a quick little console.write line. And I'll just do a quick interpolated string. There's a link in the description if you want to learn about those. And I'll just print out... Uh, Today's lunch uh, uh, has a sandwich which uses a lunch dot bread, uh, sorry, sandwich dot bread dot bread type dot two string um, bread type. So, of course, if my bread type is baguette, it'll say today's lunch has a sandwich which uses, which uses a baguette bread type. Fair enough. But, of course, this will probably come as no surprise to most of you that this code is actually going to fail when it runs. Well, to those of you that don't know, let's ask the question, why will it fail? It's going to fail because even though I've created a lunch, I have not given that lunch a sandwich. And consequently, that lunch has no bread. So, as soon as I try to access lunch.sandwich.bread, I'm, of course, going to get the dreaded null reference exception. So... Let's go ahead and run the application just to prove that it fails. So I'll start it up and you'll see, oh, there you go. The debugger says, oh, we have an unhandled exception here. No reference exception on the get of the sandwich. So the sandwich is, of course, null. We have a lunch, as we can see here, but this has no sandwich. We haven't given it a sandwich. So that's all fine and dandy because most of us know that when we're dealing with reference types or nullable types that we have to check for null before we access any members of the reference. So if we want to make sure that we're always printing out this, this string here, what we'll need to do is we'll need to check for null first. So how we might do that in a prior to C Sharp 6 way might look something like this. Uh, so prior to C Sharp 6, we would probably create a string. Let's just call it bread type. And... Let's just say it's null by default, whatever. And then we would say if my lunch.sandwich is not equal to null and my lunch.sandwich.bread is not equal to null, then my bread type is going to be equal to my lunch.sandwich.bread.bread type dot two string. Okay. Oh, that was a sentence. So if my lunch sandwich is not null and the bread is not null, then initialize my variable of bread type to be whatever the bread type dot two string is. And then afterwards we'll go and we'll print out my bread type. So if this case doesn't get hit, bread type is going to be null. So we're just going to be printing out an emptiness here, right? So let's start it and see what happens. There we go. So we get today's lunch has a sandwich which uses a bread type. We've now successfully checked for null reference exceptions and handled it accordingly. But Surely we want to be able to do this in a much cleaner way because, of course, this is nasty, right? This is, this is a long-winded way to achieve a simple goal. And that's exactly where, after C Sharp 6, the beauty of the null conditional operator comes into play. So I'll do a quick comment here and I'll say after C Sharp 6. So how can we achieve this exact same console.writeLine statement in a cleaner, more efficient, more standardized and conventional way? And here's how we can. So I'll actually really quickly copy this. And in here, I'm going to copy this real quick. 
So we're back to the original statement. This is what it looks like. But to add the null conditional operators in, all we have to do is this. Question mark. Question mark. And that's it. I'll run it real quick. And then afterwards, I'll explain it. Look at that. We get the exact same output. It evaluates to be exactly the same as the previous way. But instead of using one, two, three, four lines of code, we've used one. So what's going on here? Well, the way the null conditional operator works is, and of course, it's the question mark dot notation is what we're using here. Um, it checks the operand on the left hand side of it. And it says, if this object is not null, then do whatever it is that you're trying to do. So in this case, we're trying to access the bread property. But if it is null, return null. Just break out from the chain before you execute the rest of it and just put null in there. Just return null. So none of this that I've got highlighted gets executed if sandwich is null. But of course, if sandwich is not null, we then go to the bread property and we, we say we see the null conditional operator here. So it looks to the left-hand side, which is bread, and it says, if bread is not null, then do whatever it is that you want to do. But if bread is null, then return null. And so basically, if either of these are null, it's the equivalent to, to this. That's exactly what it will end up compiling out to be. Well, not compiling, but at runtime, that's exactly what it will end up being. Quick little note. This concept, by the way, of returning from the execution chain early if the expression is evaluated to null, is known as null propagation to anybody who's interested. And that's not the only benefit of the null conditional operators. So one other benefit that I can think of right now is that when this code gets compiled, what actually happens is the compiler generates code which is efficient such that we only actually have to evaluate each of these properties one time. And so what does that mean in comparison to prior to C-sharp 6? Well, as you'll see up above here in this little couple lines that we've got, we are accessing the sandwich property here. And if that's not null, then we actually access the sandwich property again, just so we can get to the bread. And if that's not null, then we access the sandwich property once again, and the bread once again, just to get to the bread type. So by the time we actually execute this line, in C uh, prior to C-sharp 6, we have actually evaluated sandwich two times, and this line will be the third time, which is extremely inefficient. Of course, computers these days are so fast that you wouldn't even notice the difference, but the purpose of this video, once again, guys, is to be writing code that is clean, efficient, and standardized, and the previous way just was not doing that at all. And surely you could do it in a little bit better way by holding onto a reference of the return value of the property so you don't have to actually index it again, but then you're even writing more code. Um, and another benefit of this is that because of the fact that the compiler is generating code that gets evaluated once, it means that we can actually invoke event handlers um, using the null conditional operator without having to do a null reference check. So for example, if I really quickly just uh, make some, write some code up here. So I'll create a delegate um, which returns void called my delegate. Doesn't take any parameters. And then let's say I create a public static event of type my delegate. Um, right, so I have a delegate here. Oh, I need to give it a name, my event. So I created a quick delegate function and I've created an event of that type called my event. Now, in the prior to C-sharp 6 way, if I wanted to invoke the any, if I wanted to basically let any subscribers of this event know that I'm invoking it, what I had to do before was this. I had to say var handler equals my event. And then I would say if my if handler is not null, then actually go ahead and invoke it. So that's the way, and I'm sure to anyone who's who's watching this video who's actually done any uh, event-based uh, development, this is going to be extremely familiar to you. And I mean, it's fine. It, it is, it's not a massive problem, but we can do it better. And using the null conditional operator, and because of the fact that everything gets evaluated once, it's a perfect place to use it. So we can write the exact same code as we did here, of course, in one line using the null conditional operator. And it goes like this, my event, question mark, dot invoke. And that's it. So what that is saying is, um, if my event 
is not null, so something is actually subscribed to my event, go ahead and invoke it. Otherwise, just don't do anything. That's what happens there. And we then just change three lines of code into one line of code. It's so easy to read. It's thread safe. And it's thread safe, like I said, because the compiler generates code that is efficient, such that the property is only evaluated once and stored in some local variable. Um, so it actually ends up being relatively similar to this, but we don't have to write the code to check for null. We don't have to write the code to hold a reference to the local variable and then write the code to invoke it separately if it's not null. We can just write it nice and clean like this and it behaves exactly the same way and it's totally thread safe and it's totally cool. So up until now, I've only actually showed you guys one of the two null conditional operators, which is the question mark dot notation. But there's also a question mark square brace null conditional operator as well, which does the very same thing as the question mark dot, but it allows you to access by index uh, some sort of container or enumerable or an array object. So if you have a list, for example, or an array of objects, you can actually use the question mark operator um, to check if the given object at a given index is null before you access properties on it. So you guys should, at this point should be pretty familiar with how it works, so I won't go into it too much. I'll just give a very, very quick example. And before I do that, I'll just clean up some of this code because it is starting to get a little bit hectic in here. We won't be needing any of this anymore. And let's just say I'll create, um, what will I do? I'll create an array of lunches called my lunches. And I'll initialize the array. Sorry, and I'll initialize the array and I'll give it seven. Um, I'll give it a total count of seven lunches that can be held within it. And of course, they are all going to be null at this point because I haven't actually created any lunches. I've only created an array. But uh, prior to C sharp six, if I wanted to loop over my array, and let's just do that real quick. If I wanted to loop over my array, and for every, let's say I get a reference to each iteration. So lunch, current lunch equals my lunch is i. So I get a reference to the current iteration of the loop. And if I want to go ahead and print out its bread type prior to C sharp six, what I would have to do is this. I would have to say if current lunch is not null, because of course it can be, and current lunch dot sandwich uh, is not null, and current lunch dot sandwich dot bread is not null. So you can see this gets very messy very quickly. Then we will console that right line. Um, yeah, we'll basically console that right line. Current lunch dot sandwich dot bread dot bread type dot two string, right? And then we will just basically print out the bread type. So again, very long winded process having to do all of this very explicit null checking. But after C sharp six, we can do the very same thing. And we can print over, oh, sorry, we can iterate over my lunches dot length. And instead, what we can do is we can say console dot right line. Now in here, we can say, uh, we can say my lunches question mark I, sorry, question mark I. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, if my lunches is not null, then index it. And if that indexed object is not null, index its sandwich. Oh, sorry, access its sandwich. And if that's not null, access its bread. And if that's not null, access its bread type. So you can chain it quite elegantly. So now, in this case, we will always print something, right? If any of these evaluate to be null, we'll just end up printing a blank entry. We won't have anything that gets printed. But in this case, we will only actually print something if all of these evaluate to be true. So nothing is null, then we'll actually print. But if we want to make them actually behave identically, we would of course do something like this. And then in here, we would say bread type is equal to whatever this value is, like so. And then afterwards, we would actually then uh, console our right line, the bread type. So that's how we get identical. So basically, these are the exact same behaviors. What you see here is identical to what you see here. And if I go ahead and start it, we'll see that. There you go. So obviously, we printed out a lot of blanks. Uh, in this case, we have 14 blanks because we did two iterations of seven. 
But what we can tell here is that they behave exactly the same. And to prove that, just to make sure that there's no bugs, we can just very quickly print out whatever the value of i is, and then we can afterwards print out the bread type, just so we can see that. And I will really quickly add that down here as well. Um, like so. There we go. So if I start it now, we will see... 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So they've both actually ended up resulting in the exact same console.roy line evaluation. But this one is, of course, in one line because we're using the null conditional operator for indexing. So that's the end of the video, guys. I truly hope you found it enjoyable. I hope I wasn't boring you to death. And I do indeed hope that you learned something new. As always, if you had fun, please leave a like and comment on the video. Hit me up with a subscribe and just, just let me know how you felt. It would mean a lot to me to get your feedback so that I can continue improving for your guys' sake. So without further ado, I hope you have a wonderful day and take care.